Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, adventuring into part one of what is going to be a many-part series to figure out what's the funniest movie of like the last 30 years. We're going to try to break this up into two ways. We're going to talk about the funniest movies of the 90s and the funniest movies from 2000 to 2009. And again, this is the most hilarious movie, the best comedy. Not necessarily the best movie, but the funniest movie. Because there are some movies, which are really good, that are also comedies, but they're not like gut-bustingly hilarious. Those are the parameters that we're going to go with. We're going to put them all into a bracket, and then people are going to vote on it. If you follow me on Twitter, at the PME, that is where I will be conducting the polls. Now, the polls are going to be taking a while. You have to check back. We're going to try to narrow down the movies from 2000 to 2009 and do a short list, the movies from 1990 to 1999 in a short list, and figure it out from there. And I got some uh, special guests coming up, some people you know, some people you don't know, but you're going to be plenty familiar with all of them by the time this is all done. If you out there want to get into a draw for 20 DraftKings dollars. Smash the like button to the episode. Leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section. And for the 2000 to 2009, give me your four one seeds and then leave your DraftKings handle for the funniest movies of that decade. Uh, and you'll be in that draw for 20 DK bucks. Also, if there's a movie that you think that we have missed that deserves consideration for the shortlist, and we're going to try to break it down into what's hopefully like the top 45, top 40 for this decade to fill out one side of the bracket, uh, you know, make your case for that too. And leave your DraftKings handle and you'll be in an alternate draw for 20 DraftKings dollars. If you want to be into a draw for 100 DraftKings dollars, subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, leave a five-star review, DraftKings handle, it's something you enjoy about the show, and you will be in that draw for 100 DraftKings bucks. We're going to see how much we can milk out of this content. Uh, for a while because frankly <laughs> talking about movies a lot of fun if we're going to be talking about movies we want to get different age ranges of people on here so there's me i'm in my mid-30s and now we have a youngster on the line who's what you just turned what six years old leap year birthday man gary and Thorpe? uh seven seven if you want to use that math yeah uh no i was alive for this entire age bracket which i feel like is going to come in handy it's uh it's a, it's a good good way to sort this out i think yeah, well, this is going to be this is the first show that we're recording as a part of this bracket. So I wanted to get someone older to do the 90s, like 10 to 15 years older than myself. Uh, that way, I mean, they would have been at a specific age in the 90s. And I'm sort of the perfect mix of right age to have all 90s and all two, early 2000s type of comedy reference points. Because, I mean, the decade that we're going to talk about, I was just in college smoking weed the entire time. And all I did was like watch movies on my couch instead of going to class. So, you know, I got an encyclopedic knowledge of all this stuff, but it's not just the two of us breaking it all down as we're wont to do in these situations. We have a third member of the team and his name, Tim Andergust. Tim Andergust. It's not my name. No, heard it was. You ready for this? Oh, the readiest I've ever been for anything. Anything. <laughs> Okay, so I guess question one, Gary, and I'll throw this out to you. Do you think it's better off that we do a bracket in the style of one side is this decade of movies, the other side is 90s movies, or do we just say we make the bracket supersize, do top 64 for each of them, or run our own separate brackets for each of the decades and just call it top 64 with two play-in games? Uh, let's see. I, I think that it could be fun to do a bracket of 64 for each decade and then have the, the two winners kind of square off. But at the same time, uh, I've got the master list you sent me. And I I don't want to say I easily whittled it down to like 32 movies that I feel like are deserving of going on, but we could probably just do like 32 on one side and 32 on the other. I, I think that's probably the best way to go about this. What do you think, Tim? I do. I think think it would be best to go 32 and 32 but the left side of the bracket one half is the 90s one half is the 2000s and this the other side. so if the two best comedies the last few years were both in the 2000s or both in the 90s they could meet each other in the finals that way yeah i think i would want to separate it into one decade versus the other decade getting to the finals like if one movie is going to beat another movie what's it what's the difference if it takes place in the finals or the semifinals yeah no i think that's crucial too and even you know, if we were to make this like 64 movies from this decade, 
we might have a couple like seven tens and and nine eights that are up in the air. But if you get like, you know, Anchorman up against fifty first know, dates, fifty first dates, we're kind of just wasting everyone's time. That's a great movie. It, I look, I like fifty first dates. <laughs> I think uh, you know. Sean Astin gives a great performance as a lispy, roided out brother, but uh, probably not going to stand up to Anchorman. So, okay, so that's the way that we're going to approach this. We're going to try to separate, segregate each of the movies into 32 from the 90s, 32 from the early 2000s, uh, and we'll probably do two play-in games because part of this, too, is a lot of people right now, in full disclosure, if you're watching this three years from now, uh, this is during the very beginning of the coronavirus, like quarantine. People are at home. They need something to do so they can listen to this podcast, and we're going to go through all of the matchups with different guests and do rewatches of these movies and then put out the vote. So uh, we'll probably do like you know, four at a time maybe six at a time in terms of movies so three matchups two matchups bring on different guests to talk about the entire thing it's here to make people not necessarily mad but making people mad is going to be part of it to draw engagement uh because i will eventually be doing the seatings myself the votes will be up to you the people uh like i said at the pme on the twitter account but you know i'm gonna see these things i'm gonna leave stuff out uh and it's probably gonna trigger you just a little bit but we'll see how it ends up going so where do you want to start with this Garion. I thought that we should be able to name the bracket regions and like instead of like the Midwest or the East, I feel like the 2000s should have two people that the brackets are named after, yeah. the regions. And I th I have it narrowed down to three possible options, I think. And the 90s was much harder for this. So I think you can either have the Will Ferrell region, the Judd Apatow region, or sneakily when I went back and look at it, the Ben Stiller region. Oh god. Yeah, no, see the, the no. tough thing. Well, sorry, Tim. I was gonna say the tough thing about this is there's a certain level of overlap in all these regions. Uh, like Anchorman is in the Will Ferrell region, as it should be, but that was a movie produced by Judd Apatow. Um, you know, we've got Zoolander in the Ben Stiller region, but Will Ferrell is obviously in Zoolander and arguably the funniest part of Zoolander. So. Um, um, I feel G like Gary, maybe... Gary and hold on a second. Billy okay. Zane is the funniest part of Zoolander. <laughs> My mistake. You're right. The soundtrack is the funniest part. Now, are you taking crazy pills? Put a sock in it, Zane. So continue. Um, <laughs> but I think probably what's going to happen, uh, you know, no, no disrespect to Ben Stiller, who, uh, you know, was churning out some funny movies in the nineties too. He, he could possibly be the person who maybe over overlaps in this bracket the most, uh, these two brackets, but it's probably going to be Apatow or Farrell just for the amount of movies they have. And maybe even Apatow just because he's got a writing credit or a producer credit on so many of these things. Yeah, I think that's probably the route that I want to go. Those were the first two that I had on my list. So, I mean, the, the regions are just named after people. It's not like all the Will Ferrell movies are going to appear in one of the regions. Uh, we'll try to figure out, you know, what feels like a one seed. I guess there's only going to be two one seeds from this bracket because uh, the two other one seeds are going to be 90s movies. So we'll try to figure out that and we'll do an actual bracket release show at one point once the actual concrete <laughs> seedings are going to be down. So, Tim, are you okay with that? We call it the Will Ferrell region, the Judd Apatow region? That's perfectly fine with me. Ben Stiller was making a few funny movies, but he was making terrible television during this, this decade. So I think that we would not have a bracket named after him. I mean, I'm trying to think of the terrible television that Ben Stiller made yeah. in the 2000s. He was on Undeclared, which was pretty funny. He was on Extras, in which he was super hilarious. He was on the yeah. he was on the Tenacious D HBO show, and I think that's it. Yeah. Are you talking about the Ben Stiller show, yeah. which came out in no. 1990? No, that's the 90s. Then what are you talking about? You just mentioned it. I didn't think he was all that funny in Extras. I didn't think he was any good in any of that stuff. Undeclared is not good either. What? Gary? Oh. Wow. That is that is a hot take. Look, I I mean I I won't sit here and say Undeclared is better than Freaks and Geeks. I will. I I I much prefer Undeclared to Freaks and Geeks. Freaks and I think Freaks I think uh, you know what? For the purposes of this, I will say that Undeclared is funnier than Freaks and Geeks. Uh, Freaks and Geeks is a better show though. Yeah. So the hardest part about this bracket is going to be whittling out really good movies that are comedies but aren't gut bustingly hilarious. Like an example that I'll use right away, like. Oh, one of my one of my top ten favorite movies of all yeah. time. I have on here, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Kiss Kiss yeah. Bang Bang is hysterical, but is it going to make the top thirty six funniest movies of the two thousands? I would say yes, but I feel like I'd get a lot of pushback on that. 
I mean, I think it could be in the top 32, top 36. Like even really the two that I kept coming back to that I knew we'd discuss in this sense were in Bruges and kiss, kiss, get bang, bang. And, you know, I think both are very funny. Uh, like you said, they're not, I don't know if they're necessarily the first things that come to my mind when I think of comedies in this decade, but they're, I think they're funny enough. Uh, again, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm not the consensus here, but I feel like once you get past like the, the definite top 20, top 25, the next like 15 kind of up in the air. So, you know, maybe at that point you can start using just overall greatness of a film as kind of like a tiebreaker. Well, I mean, it's starting to sound, Tim, I don't want to lie to you, that we might have to go to 64 on each side. Well, you can. I, I don't particularly care one way or the other. Uh, you know, you're just being more discriminating when you go to 32 and you make a, I think, a better bracket. But if you wanted to do 64 on each side, you could do that too. Well, here's the thing. I don't know how long this quarantine is going to last, that if we make it 64 <laughs> on each side, then, you know, there's more shows. <laughs> And True. listen, the whole point of this is, hey, we can have a, we can get online, we can, we can argue about this, we can set up the bracket, we can do the vote, but also like you know, beyond this show and then arguing about a bracket, I mean, that takes like an hour and a half, you can go watch these movies, it'll be fun to watch along with people and have a community experience that way, at least I think that's the goal of all of this. I'm just trying to imagine a Sunday where I'm watching Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and then like Hot Rod and trying to decide not which of those two movies is better, but which one is funnier. Um, it's just a very interesting sort of dynamic. Well, at least you get to go back and watch two great movies. What's the oh, difference? Yeah. yeah, that's true. All right, well, let's start with Will Ferrell because every one of his movies is not going to make this list. So the ones that I have right here, so here's the, from 2000 to 2009, here's what we're looking at for Will Ferrell. And something like, I don't know, Zoolander is under Ben Stiller, so we'll get to that later on. I have Old School, Elf, Anchorman, Wedding Crashers, Talladega Nights, Blades of Glory, Semi-Pro, and Step Brothers. I think what we need to do first is say which ones are automatic yeses onto this list. I'm going to say Old School, Anchorman, Wedding Crashers, and Step Brothers. Those four. And I think that Talladega Nights is in the discussion. That's That was my exact five. I think there's definitely five have to make it, and those would be my five. Uh, can I just say that I hate Elf? I don't... It's a, it, I, it's I a don't, bad movie. I mean, there was a young kid... If you put in Elf a, in this bracket, Elf is going to win two to three rounds. Just be aware. Just, yeah. But that's like a nostalgia thing, I think. I, like, I don't know. Just saying, if you exclude it, then that's fine. But if you include it, it's going to win several rounds. Would you say... This, this is one of those things, though. It's like how we talk about, like, Die Hard as a Christmas movie. This is almost the reverse, but, like... Elf is funny for a Christmas movie. I wouldn't say like Elf. I, I, I maybe laugh like three times watching Elf, which for the purposes of this exercise uh, is not nearly enough, I think, to have it be considered. It's, again, even if you're just ranking Will Ferrell movies, uh, you know, if, if we start including Zoolander, if we start including, I guess there's not a whole lot from like the 2010s, but, you know, I don't even know if it's a top 10 funniest Will Ferrell movie. Well, I mean, I think I like Elf more than you like Elf, but if we're going to talk about hilarity of a movie, like, it's funny for a Christmas movie, it's also funny for a kid's movie, but it's up against yeah. the rest of his catalog. Like, I think it, I mean, I even mentioned Stranger Than Fiction. I mean, that's like an okay movie, but it's, there's some movies that it's objectively just crossed off the list to begin with, because there's only so many we can talk about. So I, I'm going to put Elf on the fringe of one of these. We're going to lock in Old School, Anchorman, Step Brothers, and Wedding Crashers. What? Tim, would you include Talladega Nights? Do you think that makes the cut? No, I think... It, now, we're playing a 32-man bracket here, right? I mean, you can talk about it in terms of a 32-man bracket or a 64-man bracket. If it's 32, no. If 64, yes, for sure. It's right. probably like the 45th best comedy. But would you have would you have Elf in a 32-man? Would you have Elf over Talladega Nights? Yeah, I, I think Elf has to get really? in. Even if you make it a 12 or a 13 seed, I think it has to, get, I think it has to be in the bracket. I think that if we're, I think if we're whittling it down to the top 36, so 32 seeds, you have two play-in spots or four play-in spots, however that ends up working out. Sure. Um, I don't think that Elf makes the cut. I really don't, because we're going to get to a bunch well, of movies that are hilarious. We, we, we could do just a straight-up Will Ferrell play-in game and have the people decide this. We could do Elf versus Talladega Nights as a play-in game. So there we go. See, Gary, and this is why you're here. 
Yeah, this is a good a, idea. There we go. Look, I, cause I will say for Talladega nights, uh, I would have it as the fifth of those top five, but at the same time, I think there's, there's a lot of like iconic scenes in those movies, like Will Ferrell running around, uh, thinking he's on fire. Right. <laughs> will Ferrell praying to baby Jesus. And then John C. Riley admitting that he likes his baby Jesus to be kind of a party guy with a tuxedo t-shirt on. Fantastic. Like it's maybe as a movie, not the most, like it's, I bet if you asked a lot of people, what is the story? What is the plot of Talladega Nights? They'd have no idea. But I think there's like four or five scenes in that movie that are iconic. Are you saying that the the whole thing that people don't remember or remember from Talladega Nights isn't the burgeoning love story between Will Ferrell and Amy Adams? I think that would shock people that Amy Adams is in that movie. It's funny. I watched it like two weeks ago and I totally forgot she was in the movie. Like to me, I still think that Sasha Baron Cohen is the funniest part of that movie. Him watching the like watching Will Ferrell go around the track, and I think it's a French version of Paint It Black, and him smoking like yeah, the ob- cigarette, the yeah, long cigarette, yeah, the obnoxiously yeah. long French cigarette, just it kills me. Yeah, no, it's it's even even like uh, the interactions with the kids and the grandmother. It's I I again I I really do think that movie would make the top thirty two, but I'm I'm very interested to see how it would fare in a play on gaming itself. All right, so are we giving up on Blades of Glory or Semi Pro for a top thirty-two? Maybe in a sixty-four conversation. Even then, uh, I, I don't mean, like those movies that I, much. I, I I think Blades of Glory is pretty funny, and I know that there are people out there who love Semi Pro. I didn't love it all that much, but I think Blades of Glory is pretty fucking hilarious. I think I think Blades would be in there over Semi Pro, and I would put I would definitely put Blades in in a sixty-four. I don't think it makes the cut in a thirty-two though. All right. So if we have to rank these, does Will Ferrell get two one seeds? Does he get one one seed? Like if like when I initially put this out and thought about it, and I tried to put two movies from the 90s and two movies from the 2000s when I thought about my four number one seeds. But it feels like the most iconic comedy from this era, those 20 years is Anchorman. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. I, I have six movies I identified as possible one seeds. Two of them are Will Ferrell movies, uh, Anchorman or Step Brothers, and I think Anchorman just wins out. You have to look for, just from a longevity standpoint. Like that—that that might honestly be the most quoted movie of a particular generation. I guess my generation, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think there's a there's a very good case that Anchorman is the one. Tim, would you go with Anchorman as, as uh, the uh, overall? Is it the overall number one seat of the entire bracket? Do you think they they get the of easy the region? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it is the Duke of, of of this of this region for sure. It's lovable, it's popular, and it's the best. So yeah, I, I would definitely like the best in terms of like beloved. Like it's not my favorite comedy, but I think it's a fantastic one. It has to be number one. It also might feature like the most like in terms of just getting every single iconic comedy movie person in a single film. Aside from maybe like knocked up just because it has like all the Apatow guys just hanging out and talking shit around a table. But even like Seth Rogen's in that movie as a cameraman, like there's everyone kind of pops up in there. So it really checks every box. Yeah. And then you get even some like SNL crossover, like Chris Parnell's randomly in the movie and Fred Willard's in it. And Fred Willard's going to have a real impact on this bracket. Say, Fred Willard is going to be in some other very, very highly rated movies. Well, yeah. that's, that, that's going to be the weird twist on this entire bracket because there's movies <sighs> that I know that viewers of this show are going to like that the public <laughs> is going to like. But we're going to be super high on like three or four movies that are very specific to just the, they're criminally underseen yeah. movies. And maybe that's the whole point of this, that we can introduce, not to say that they're like unknown movies by any means, but even something like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, for example, just people haven't seen that movie and they really should. We're going to have the, the Christopher Guest paradox is, is what we're going to get into. It's, it's going to be fun territory. All right. So the next we'll go to the Judd Apatow region, try to figure out what's in and what's out. This actually seems even harder than the Will Ferrell one because you could make a case for almost all of these six movies I whittled it down to. So it starts with 40-Year-Old Virgin. And obviously, Anchorman's in the Will Ferrell one. I tried not to overlap too much here with my notes. 40-Year-Old Virgin, Knocked Up, Walk Hard, Super Bad, Pineapple Express, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I think the one out of those... Pineapple Express can go. That's what I was going to say. I think Pineapple yeah. Express can yeah. get fucking launched. I agree. Get rid of it. Gone. See ya. Um, I guess if you had to start making cuts from that point... Uh, it's it's incredibly hard. It pains me to say this because I I think it's 
it's one of those movies that I think I forget how funny it is until I watch it. Walk hard. Uh, walk hard. And, and I think the reason it might have to get the boot just is if we have to, it was, you know, just pretty critically panned. It, it seemed to come and go at the time without making much of an impact. So if we want to, you know, if we want to take a look at this from just like a sort of stands the test of time, I think it's, it's one of those movies that's picked up a real big sort of cult following. Um, and it's, again, it's hilarious. I think it should definitely make the top 32, but if we had to whittle one more, it's probably walk hard. So what would you agree with that, Tim? Yes, I would. So what ends up as your one from the Apatow region? Uh, go through it again. Just cause you have the list and I don't say them so, again. 40 year old virgin knocked up super bad and forgetting Sarah Marshall. Strangely, I think super it comes, I think it comes down to super bad and forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah, I would really? think so. I would yeah, wow, I and, and I love forgetting Sarah Marshall, but I would say that the probably for me the two ones would be Forty Year Old Virgin or Superbad, and I would I would strongly lean Superbad. I I think that's actually just my favorite movie, um, but I, I I don't know. I feel like forgetting Sarah Marshall is fantastic. I'm just not sure it had it had quite the the cultural standing i'm not I, I, i'm not too concerned about the cultural standing okay. I'm, I'm concerned about what's hilarious and forgetting sarah marshall is fucking oh, it's, hilarious it's hilarious uh but i i think i think if we're gonna if we're gonna split on that then i think we can all just agree that super bad is the one then yeah super bad would be the one i guess maybe we'll put forgetting sarah marshall and 40 year old virgin sort of the same tier i think that knocked up deserves to be in the top 32 but it's closer to 32 than the rest of these ones are yeah, yeah. i agree i got mad suey it's a good it's one of those movies that it straddles the line between like just outrageous comedy versus sort of a serious movie like it it it's not just joke after joke after joke after joke where no, i mean i've got some outrageous comedies on here like that and you're right this one tells more of a story yeah like there, there's a more serious element to this like i didn't put on funny people for the app no. now bracket that that's more serious so can we put on the first half of funny people and then just turn off your television Maybe. I mean, that would actually probably qualify for the top 32, but as an overall, you know, overall, it gets kind of sad. Can can we have a debate? I mean, because I, I actually now sort of agree with you. I kind of just had knocked up on there as sort of like, oh, yeah, it was the start of the Rogan thing. It's a really funny movie. Walk Hard might be funnier than Knocked Up. Might be. Knocked Up is still pretty good. Like, there's the whole Jason Siegel subplot in knocked up where he just plays a guy who's basically one of my best friends who's just oblivious to everything besides like working out and hitting on people married or not it just it, it, it really resonates with me yeah no look again it's 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 a hard decision uh i'm just sad to see walk hard go i if we expand this to 64 of course walk hard would be in. do you think it's weird that the three of us all kind of unanimously agreed that pineapple pineapple express would be like an insta launch. And like, I was a stoner around this time and I still didn't find it funny. It has no purchase. It didn't at the time. It wasn't funny. There are a it lot, was, there are a lot like of people the, that find it super hilarious though. It was like the world's introduction to Danny McBride. I guess it, it has that going for it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's fine. I, I just, it, I don't think it comes close to these other ones. All right, so let's move to Ben Stiller, who I do think has, like, the third best catalog of movies here. So we have Meet the Parents, yep. Zoolander, Royal Tenenbaums, yep. Starsky and Hutch. You don't need to say yep. I'm just fucking listing them off. I'm looking at my list. <laughs> Meet the Parents, <laughs> Zoolander, Royal Tenenbaums, Starsky and Hutch, Dodgeball, Meet the Fockers, and then Tropic Thunder. Royal Tenenbaums is a real monkey wrench into this entire thing because it's a great movie. Is it super hilarious in the way that a lot of these comedies are hilarious? Because it's not. Yes. It's its own brand of humor, but it is very funny. It's hilarious. It's a comedy. It's a knee slapper at, at certain moments, for sure. Uh, any bracket that didn't have Tenenbaums isn't a bracket worth doing. Gary, what do, what do you make of Tenenbaums here? Because it would not be the highest rated if for the purposes of this bracket of the Ben Stiller. No, uh, I, I I think I agree with Tim that it should be in the 32, but I think it's clearly fourth behind uh, Zoolander, Dodgeball, and Tropic Thunder. Oh, that's the way you were going to go with it. See, Tropic I think Thunder is clearly first. I was going to say Zoolander. Zoolander and Tropic Zoolander, Thunder. Zoolander, I think, has got to be first. No, Zoolander I don't agree. Zoolander and Tropic Thunder are a clear one-two from the Stiller. Yeah. Like, they're definitely in. 
Maybe it's a. I find Meet the Parents very funny. I do. It's hilarious. Look, I, I have no problem with Meet the Parents. Um, I and, and look, maybe it's maybe it comes down to like what you're looking for in a particular evening. But I I find myself very. I, I don't think there's a situation where I would ever be in a spot given the option between Meet the Parents and Dodgeball where I'd rather watch Meet the Parents. Oh, I don't know about that. I've probably seen Dodgeball more times, but it's always on more. Do you hate pirates? Is that the problem? I do. I mean, Steve the Pirate. I mean, I'm, I'm out on him. Alan mm. Tudyk, is that his name? Yeah. There we go. From Firefly. Now, now we can just do like obscure sci-fi drama bracket. That's going to be after this one. Sure, we'll get there. So I'm going to put a check mark next to that. This, see, this kind of talks about the case for Ben Stiller. Like, he has like five movies, which you could consider for the top 32 here. Sure. I mean, you were, you were willing to write him off for what you consider three bad cameos in TV shows. I'm just saying he's not the, he's not first or second. So, and I, I don't think, I, I still think that Farrell and Apatow are ahead of him. So, sorry, I'm not going to change my opinion. Did Ben Stiller promise to sign with the Jets and then go to the Vikings? Why do you hate him so much? I, I don't. I, actually, I, I mentioned that I liked a lot of these movies. It's just that I didn't think he was better than Apatow or, or, or Farrell. I, I just because we're talking about him now doesn't mean that I'm going to change my opinion to liking him better than the other guys. So if we agree that Anchorman is the one seed for Will Ferrell, that's going to be his representative for potential one seed. And we think that Superbad is the potential one seed from the Apatow bracket. Do we put Zoolander or Tropic Thunder into that mix? Or is that definitely a two seed? I think they're both two seeds. Like they would be the next. Okay. Let's say if we expand it to 64 or one of those in the running for a one seed. One of them is not both, and I don't know. How, you, you guys can pick between the two, but certainly they both can't because there's other movies. I'll say this, uh, not not to get too ahead of ourselves, but I think there are two like behemoth movies we haven't talked about yet. I agree. I agree. Um, and and there's one in particular which I think we forget that it probably is the number one seed from all. Oh, I'm, I'm curious because I have I have the two I'm talking about. I have one that's like I think everyone would agree if we were to do a 64 would definitely be a one seed. And then I have one where maybe we're talking about the same one in this sense, where I, I think on the surface, you might think really did that last that long, but it definitely did. All right. We're going to expand that. Uh, we're going to expand this to 64. That's what we're okay. going to do. So we're going to talk about four one seeds. So again, the draw is smash the like, leave your DraftKings handle in the comment section. Give me your four one seeds from this or any movie that we haven't talked about that de deserves consideration. Now that we've expanded the field to 64, probably 68. So we can do some play in game shows uh, is so that puts Pineapple Express back on the board as a potential top 64. Yeah. Talladega Nights, Blades of Glory. Are we just going to cut semi pro from this list? Do you think? Who at 64, I think it probably makes it. All right, I'm going to put a 64 note next to it. Are we cutting Meet the Fockers from Ben Stiller? Yes, we'll take Meet the Parents. And we'll see Meet the Parents highly, but uh, we won't take Meet the Fockers. All right, so rest of the seeds, potential ones. So I think I, can I try to guess the two movies you would have as the potential ones, Gary? Please do. Because I think the number one overall seed could very well be Borat, and then The Hangover is probably the other one. Those are the two. Yeah. Hot take, I think old school is funnier than The Hangover. See, I, I, and I wanted to have this discussion with you guys because I think for as much as I was joking off the top, I've been alive for all these movies and that's important. Uh, I'm 92. So of all the movies we're talking about, old school hit me when I was like 10. So I was, it wasn't quite in the sweet spot. Like I saw Superbad when I was in 11th grade. So that lined up pretty perfectly for me. Old school, I've seen, and I think it's hilarious, but it's more of a, I didn't experience it through the first go around. So would you say it does have the sticking power to go up against The Hangover? Because The Hangover was, I think that might be the only comedy I've ever seen in theater more than twice. The Hangover is much funnier. I actually don't think there's much of a debate. Oh, see, I don't find that at all. You want to talk about like the movies that kicked all of this off. Old school, old, old, old school is the movie that kicked all of sure, this no, off. Sure, no, I would agree with that statement, yeah. But that doesn't matter. As you said earlier, we're only worried about what's the most hilarious thing. And the hangover is just pound for pound, shot for shot. Just funnier. Just is. Sorry. 
I see. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I like the people in old school better. They're funnier people, and I think that they're doing good. And it's from the. I mean, they're both Todd Phillips movies. I mean, they're not as funny as yeah. the jo- as the Joker, maybe, but or a Star Is Born, which I think. I guess. I guess it'll it'll come up more in the '90s bracket. But when we're talking about people who might have to have brackets named after them, are we sleeping on Vince Vaughn? Vince Vaughn is, he's kind of falls into the Will Ferrell bucket in a weird way. Like he crosses over with Will Ferrell and Ben Stiller that, yeah. I mean, he's the lead in Dodgeball. He's the co-lead in Starsky and Hutch. He's a co-lead in old school, like, and he's the co-lead of Wedding Crashers. And a principal antagonist in Anchorman. Yeah, he's like a cameo <laughs> in Anchorman. Uh, it's sort of like how Will Ferrell's a cameo in Wedding Crashers, but it just feels like it's either him or Will Ferrell. And I would take Will Ferrell as the bigger star and more impact oh, sure. from that sure. decade. No, I agree. But I mean, everyone forgets, like, and we'll talk about when we do the 90s show, how influential Vince Vaughn was to a certain segment of movies just after Swingers. And then like he yeah. did basically nothing between Swingers. And then he re-pops back up and like, he was in the remake of Psycho in this weird movie called Domestic Disturbance, which an usher almost had to tell me to leave. Oh, in theaters. that was on TBS all of the time. It's a bad movie. Yeah, but I've seen it like six times. <laughs> just pieces of it in different forms. Just, just him creeping in the dark, telling his son he's going to kill him. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with putting The Hangover as a one seed as it comes down to this over old school, because we already have Will Ferrell represented in this, uh, and we have another Apatow movie with Superbad, uh, you know, production-wise, being included in this. So he gets two in there. Then I'm good with The Hangover being there. I just, Hangover's great. But I think it. I think if I ended up voting in this bracket and it went head to head with Super Bad, or it went head to head with if it Anchorman. went Anchorman or Super Bad, or even like forgetting Sarah Marshall, like I'd probably pick the other ones over it. I look. I don't disagree with you. I just think it's. And again, how much stock we want to put into this? Because I will say first and foremost, I just think it's it is a hilarious movie. Um, but considering that it was. I don't want to say it wasn't a hyped film, but I think it speaks to how funny and how popular and how groundbreaking the film was that something that had no budget at all spawned like $200 million terrible sequels. Uh, And like Zach Galifianakis probably did like eight movies in the next three years after, after this movie came out in 2009. Like it was, it was a really big deal. I had Skittles in there. Jesus, oh. Jesus, the first time I heard that, heard that line, I cried. I was laughing so hard. Uh, oh my god! But I think I think Borat's like a fun conversation, though, because that's I, that's one of those that. Do you think people forget how big a deal that was? Yes, I do, and I think that it it is. You talk about the most quoted of all these movies. Borat oh, yeah. is probably the, more so than Anchorman. Um, I think people just got sick of Borat. That was the problem yes, because it was definitely. so popular over time. Although I think this stuff is cyclical and Borat will have a renaissance at some point, but that came like people knew, uh, I, I, maybe it's one of these things where like, even when we talk about the Christopher guest movies in a second, that it's hugely popular amongst a certain subsect of people. And then the rest of the people just didn't know what the hell was going on. Like when the Ali G movie came out, people knew about the Ali G show, but no one had ever really watched it. Cause if they did, they would know about Borat to begin with. The Ali G movie comes out. No one really cares. Borat comes out and it's a legit good movie. Like when you get Larry Charles on your team and whose production credits are Sasha Baron Cohen movies, Seinfeld and curb, like you're going on the right path. Like it's so much better then I think people remember it being as an actual movie and pound for pound laughs per second, probably one of the highest. Definitely. No disputing that. Yeah. Look, I mean, I don't know the real Kazakhstanian national anthem, but I know the fake one. And I think that certainly is a testament to this film. Do you think it's just a situation where people got sick of Borat? That, yeah, I mean, I think it's the stuff he did after that wasn't very good. And so like that, like, dozens and i mean literally dozens of people watched what is america and uh bruno flopped too so like because his subsequent stuff wasn't nearly as good i think that unfortunately takes some of the shine off borat which is legitimately hilarious but i mean 
Bruno wasn't like a non box office hit. It made like eighty million dollars at the box office, but it had zero cultural staying power. Like yeah, just it was a, 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 as as do most movies. The biggest thing that happened to Sasha Baron Cohen post this, uh, he was in a really oh, what the hell was it called? I watched it and like it was it was good to watch. It was like an Israeli spy Cold War drama that he was oh, in. Oh, um, recently, yeah, like yeah. within the last year. Uh, I don't remember what it was called, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't so good. I can like remember it, but I did binge it when it first came out. I was like, this looks interesting. It was well, he was, I think he was nominated for like a Golden Globe or something for it. Yeah. Um, either way, his biggest problem was he was always able to shoot the show and then he was able to shoot Ali G and where it wasn't that popular, he could continue doing things. Once he shot Borat, everyone knew who he was. So his entire game plan was gone like he, he his actual move would have been shoot borat no and have the foresight say this is going to be a huge fucking hit shoot bruno shoot whatever else and then release borat because once borat came out he couldn't go into public anymore like tim what was that show that he did this this is america yeah who is america or what is america again like nobody watched this thing and it wasn't good well, the, the problem is he can't suck people into the, I mean, culture is just different now. For one thing, people think that they're being set up all the time, but no amount of prosthetics anymore can cover up that you don't know that you don't know you're talking to him. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an issue. Um, but like you said, I think there's, I think there's a special, just in terms of cultural impact, I think Borat is special in the sense that, I mean, there are, look, we're, if we had to say what's the most quoted movie of this decade, I still think it's probably Anchorman. But the the way that Borat quotes have kind of like gestated in the popular culture, like they're now like ironic because they've been quoted so often, like my wife. I would say there are people who say that and don't even know the name of the movie they're quoting. My like it's it, it, well, in fairness, my wife. Uh, when we were saying our nuptials at our wedding, uh, she had a one rule for me that if I said do you, t if I said my wife in that voice during it, that she would say no to marrying me. Like during that's the ceremony. fair. I I can't blame her. Um, yeah. Look, I, I again, I I had it as one of my six considerations for the top seed in this bracket, and I I think that's justified. We, did we get to all of the movies that you had in consideration? Or, yeah, or, yeah, or? we're we're through all six. Tim, was there another one that you had in consideration for your tops, top four at least? Not based on the criteria that we put forward in terms of like it's it doesn't have to just be hilarious. It does have to be quite popular too to be a one what? seed. Why? You, Why does it have to be popular? An obscure listen, like we haven't talked about them much, but like Best in Show is better than all of these movies, pretty much. A Mighty Wind is better I, than I, pretty much now, all I these see. I, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but I do Who's have them on in par with them. I, I agree. I have them. When we talk about the next tier of movies, not the ones, but the twos and threes, like that region, both of those movies are in consideration. Yeah, Super Troopers is is every bit as good uh, as these movies are. Uh, I know it's very obscure, but I think I Heart Huckabees is fantastic. It's and not. Could, it is not hilarious like these movies are hilarious. They, I agreed. Uh, that's why it could couldn't make there. Uh, what else do I have? Well, you don't just need to yeah. name off all the movies. We're going to get to the next tier. No, here the ones that have potential to be a one or a two. That that's it. I will say um, I, I did just so we get a uh, you know a different a differing view of the opposite sex. I asked my girlfriend uh, if she would consider any movies aside from the six I had as one seeds, uh, and the one she did come back with was Mean Girls, which I watched over the weekend. Very hilarious. Yeah. Which that is, that is a very fun movie. Yes, it's hilarious. It's it's got cultural impact. Uh, the cast is fantastic. Um, so I, I, I have it written down as a two or a three seed because I, I do think it's it's a phenomenally funny movie. I just, I don't think I have it with those top six. All right, well, let's go to the next tier then. Mean Girls is on that tier for me. I have Role Models on that tier. Definitely. Super Troopers. Uh, Club Dread and Beer Fest, we'll talk about the, maybe we'll just do a discussion about those guys right now, the Broken Lizard guys. So Super Troopers, Club Dread, and beer fest if we're talking top 64 i think beer fest is in club dread is probably just launched but super troopers could be a bad two seed strong three seed i agree yeah i i think uh i might have it a little lower um but i think you're right in the sense that super troopers would easily make a 32 i think beer fest makes a 64 uh and that's probably how i would separate those movies 
All right, so the other movies that I think I would consider this tier, we'll hold off on the discussion of the Christopher Guest movies for just a second. Um, Role Models, sneakily the most underrated of all of those like same comedies that kept coming out during the- like, I'm, I'm surprised you have it this high. I love Role Models. I, 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 if it was just me ranking like my favorite comedies of this decade, it would be like number three. It's very high. Yeah. It's a fantastic movie. It's a fantastic movie. Look, I, I think Sean William Scott is incredible in that movie. He's no. hilarious. J um, J J like how we look back at Big Lebowski and are stunned John Goodman didn't receive an Oscar nomination for playing Walter. I am stunned Jane Lynch did not receive an Oscar nomination oh, for Rule Models. Yeah. Just her dancing out in motion from behind the television is <laughs> probably the funniest thing that happened in any movie of the decade. Okay, so this 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 is interesting though because I think if we're starting to talk about like two threes and fours, I think role models and like Hot Rod are in a very similar class of movie for me. And you would have role models over Hot Rod because I think I'd have Hot Rod over role models. I would have role models over Hot Rod, but I love Hot Rod as well. I think that's a that's a that's a four seed to me. Yeah. So is Road Trip. Road Trip is on a step Ooh. down behind that, but it's very close as well. Road is Road Trip. Is Road Trip seriously above Euro Trip, or are they close? I would put it above Euro Trip. I like them both. I and, really like Euro Trip. And Road Trip's not the only uh, Tom Green movie I'd have on this list. Oh, you would, have, would you have Freddy Got Fingered on this list? That's such a funny movie. Freddy Got Fingered is making the bracket. It yeah. Is. Where, where, where's your LeBaron, Freddy? No, I don't see one for you. Are there two LeBarons? <laughs> Cracking yourself up. <laughs> Yeah, Freddy Got Fingered is probably going to make... It's going to get my vote to make this bracket, uh, even if it is top 32. It's just such a weird movie. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's so weird. It's surreal. It's insane. Um, but yeah, do you think the Euro trip road trip thing is as simple as just... It depends if you were born in the early 90s or the late 80s? And which one you just happened to be at the, that, the kind of sweet spot in terms of age? Because I feel like I watched Euro trip more than I watched Road Trip. I feel like Euro Trip was on TV more. Like it was on, it was actually on TBS all the time. Yeah, that might have been it. Who knows? The, the Matt Damon pull. Yeah. Uh, so other movies, I think we can throw in here. There's one. There's there's two movies. We'll get to them that I really hate. That I think we need to discuss. That I don't find funny, but everyone else seems to find funny. So who am I to argue? But yeah, Hot Rod will be a part of that tier. Team America, I think, needs to be a part of that tier. Yeah, I think so. Seems people like it. You don't like it? Um, eh, it's all right. Team America is fucking great. Yeah, it's a bit. It, actually, it's a bit rich. After a while, it's sort of like, okay, all right, sure. You just sound like no fun. What are you going to make a case for, like Johnny English, because it stars Mr. Bean? <laughs> no, I, I would be lying if I've said I've ever seen that movie. Tom or Tim prefers Johnny English Reloaded. I think if if we have to get into specifics. Well, we've already heard about how he loves Fifty First Dates. That's a really funny movie, and it's, I don't care. It's what honestly a fine movie. I would, would say it's more cute than funny, though. Would, would you have it higher rated as a comedy than Team America: World Police? No, no. I would not. So here but, we go. No. Okay, so the the two that I'm looking at right now that I don't like. One is Wet Hot American Summer. I just don't find it funny, and I know people love it. Do you guys have any particular take on this? I never saw that movie. I I am I am the type of person who does like Wet Hot American Summer. Um, I can also accept that it is a movie that divides people, but it has Niles in it, so I think that that has you know that's got to have it going for it. You know what, Gary? And if um, I want my Niles fix, I'm just going to inject Frasier directly into my bloodstream. That's, that's fair. Um, I think I think it would have it would a hundred percent have to make a sixty four. Uh, I, I think I think wanted... we pr I think we probably have to include it in the thirty two. I think it's popular yeah. enough. It's just I don't like it. Like, I, I would have it in my 32. Um, but again, I can understand that it's just too out there for some people. Hmm. Me, myself, and Irene. Ugh. I actually Not like me, for... myself, and Irene. Does it make the top 32, though, Gary? Wouldn't make my top 32. It would make 64, but it... I don't know. I, I've seen it twice. I, I wouldn't say... I, I, I'm not even sure I could tell you a particular line from that movie. It didn't didn't really have much of an impact with me. But that would do we is that Carrie's only movie we have here or is there there's also that one with uh 
eternal sunshine of a spotless mind? That, <laughs> I don't that's, think that's, that's a comedy. Yeah. I, I, um, I don't think that's going to make a comedy list. <laughs> Uh, yes, man. I guess Yes, man was the one that came out in like 2008, right? And Bruce Almighty, Bruce I guess. Almighty. Oh, Bruce it, Almighty. That's true, too. Yeah. I don't even know if that would make the top 64, would it? No, nah, probably not. Probably, probably not. No. And it's funny because when we get to the 90s bracket, like one of the, I mean, that there's such a debate. You, I think that Carrie is the one seed from the 90s, isn't he? He and Mike Myers, yeah. Or, I mean, Adam Sandler is probably bigger and than Adam Mike Sandler. Myers. Yeah, I would say Sandler and Carrie. Yeah. That's kind of where I went with it, too. But there's also other people on that list that had, like, shockingly good decades. You're like, oh. Like, Chris Farley's in a lot of really hilarious movies from the 90s. Not shocking. You just, you just don't remember that. Now. Like you, When people think Farley, it's like, oh, Tommy Boy, Black Sheep, Beverly Hills Ninja, Almost Heroes. But he's sort of like how Will Ferrell popped up in all of the funny movies in the 2000s. Like in some, He's the one giving the unnecessary advice in Wayne's World as the security guard. Yeah, and he, and he plays a different <laughs> character in Wayne's World, too. And he's also, isn't he in like three of the first four Sandler movies? Something like that? Yeah, he's in Billy, he's the bus driver in Billy Madison. Billy Madison. He's yeah. in, I think he's the boyfriend in Coneheads. Yeah. <laughs> he's, the boyfriend like, in Coneheads. he's just in stuff the entire yeah. time. Um, there is an outlier movie here. So I'm going to put Hot Rod into 32. Oh yeah, the other movie I don't like, which yeah. I, I don't think, maybe we'll throw it into the 64, but I think Grandma's Boy is a fucking terrible movie. It's not funny. Yeah, it was no, never for me either. Not. You need to be so fucking high to find that movie funny. That you know, Maybe you are, and you find it <laughs> hilarious. You get the gigs like you're Tim all day, but watching it, <laughs> what, even watching it well high, I didn't find it very funny. Watching it sober, I was like, this is just bad. Speaking of high, though, because uh, I had, these these would be my last like couple of possible suggestions for like a, maybe not a two, but like a three or a four. Uh, Harold and Kumar. I think that's more uh, of a mid-tier movie. Okay, that's fair. Uh, and then where do we kind of land? I think there are definitively two very good movies in the Cornetto trio. Uh, like I think Hot Rod and Shaun of the Dead, or sorry, not sorry, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz uh, are indescribably better than At World's End. Uh, but would either one of those possibly sneak its way into like a four, four or even a five suit? I don't know because, it, again, that goes back to the actual funny part of it. That's like, true. They're both funny movies, and they're both satires, which is a bit of a different range. But I would say that Hot Fuzz is, like, funnier than Shaun of the Dead. I would agree with that. Yeah. Although I might Yeah, like, I mean, look, I, 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 I might like... even probably put those two in a very similar spot as Best in Show. Um, I don't know about that. Well, just in the sense that they are sort of... They're... They're more subtle about their humor. Uh, they're sort of parodies. Um, cause, cause Pat's right. I mean, they're not, they're not laugh out loud funny. Like some of the movies we have in the top, you know, 10 movies of this bracket. So it's hard to differentiate. So we, I mean, we, we might have to make this into a two parter to fill out a 64 here, but what do we do with jackass? Oh, it's it falls into that Borat bucket of yeah, it definitely makes the bracket, but it's like an eight seed. Like it's an eight nine seed. It might get out in the first round. It might get one round. But it's also a movie I could see being immensely popular because people of a certain age love Jackass. My I'm in that age group. Yeah, well, put it in a tough tough group and give it a tough seating and let the people hammer it where they want. So how many, thir how many 30 of the, and this is why I say we might have to go to 64. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So we're at 26 already for the top 32. And there's still a ton of movies we haven't got to yet. So it has to be 64, I think. Oh, yeah, like we haven't talked about Bad Santa. We haven't no, talked no, no, no. About... I, I, I understand the movies that we haven't talked about, Tim. Eventually, we're going to talk about them. Uh, okay, if you say so. That, I mean, that's the point of this is to talk through them. But I want to finish out the top 32. Maybe we'll separate the other stuff into a different show uh, once we can figure out the top 32-ish. Like, there are two American Pie movies that came out, two in American Wedding. Are we going to call any of those top 32, top 64? Ugh. No and no. 
Yeah, I, look, if we're gonna if we're gonna consider either one, it's probably American Pie Two. I was gonna say American Wedding. Really? No, yeah. Both bad. I prefer American no. Pie Two. No, they're not getting in. I don't think. Well, I but I would. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Tim in the sense. I don't think you have to put either one of them in. All right, I'll put them on the 64 short list, and we're calling Bruce Almighty out. I think so. Yeah. All right. Here's one for you. You ready? Clerks Two. Yes, in love I, it. I put think it it's. In. I think it's in the top 32 as well. Yeah. And it's when, fantastic. And when we talk about the 90s bracket, I can just rail on how much I hate the original Clerks, which I don't. Find <laughs> funny. I mean, look, I, I, it's definitely if you're looking for something to sit down and laugh at, uh, Clerks isn't at the top of my list. Okay. Shrek or Shrek 2? Because I think Shrek is probably one of the 32 funniest movies. Yeah. But Shrek 2 is one of the worst movies of this decade. Oh, boy, is it ever. All the sequels were bad. But the original Shrek is actually incredibly clever and smart. And so, yeah, I would definitely want to put it on, like, it's like a 10 seat. Like, it gets in the draw, but it may easily get out in the first round. Like, do you think yeah, it's, it's a, a, a 30 I was going to say, it's a movie that definitely suffers. F- the farther away you get from the point it was released, the more and more, like, you realize how specific some of those references are. Well, um, I, I feel like that's more of a problem for Shrek 2 than the original Shrek. And, sure, and because frankly, they, they leaned into that way too much in the sequel. But I, I still think it's apparent in the sequel. But I, I agree. I would have Mike it as a Myers top Mike Myers does that in all the movies he does. That's a Mike Myers thing. Sure, yeah. So I, I agree. Guess, I'm just saying, like, I, I think you're right in the sense that if we're doing a 64, it's probably like a 9 or a 10 seed. Would you throw Gold Member even into the top 64? No. I don't think I would either. No. The Spy Who Shagged Me was funnier than Goldmember, and The Spy Who Shagged Me shouldn't be on this list. Well, it's not from this decade, so it can't be. I believe it was 2000, wasn't it? It was 1999. 99, yeah. Okay, fair enough. What else do we have here that we can possibly throw in? All right, let's talk about it right now. Best in show and a mighty wind. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to throw for your consideration into it. I didn't think it was that funny. Best in show, if you wanted to make a case for it as a one seed, I would hear it. I don't think, just like Tim said, because of uh, actual exposure and people who've seen it. It was the very first DVD I ever owned. It was Best in Show, shockingly enough. But I think it's funnier than A Mighty Wind, and it's probably a lock to be a top four seed. But it's one of those top four seeds that if we do a 64 bracket and release it to the public, might get beat by the 13 seed. Yeah, yeah. It, needs, it needs protection. Um, I'm yeah, not trying gonna, to think. I'm not going to rig it. Like, let's say hypothetically, like a mighty wind as a four comes up against like scary movie as a 13. Yeah. Scary movie probably wins. I agree. I mean, it wouldn't be my vote, but I think that's how just what would you say of people watching the show right now? Maybe my audience is a little bit different because we've talked about this stuff before, but like percentage of people that watch all these movies that have seen the majority of these movies, would you say that best in show would fall to closer to the bottom of this list? No, I think people have enough people have seen it that it wouldn't be that obscure now. I don't know, Gary. I'm trying to think. Like, do you do you in any way do you think um, sort of the popularity of Schitt's Creek and really putting like Catherine O'Hara and Eugene Levy into the public consciousness again? Like, maybe some people have gone back and watched their catalog, and maybe it's become a little bit just in that sense. I don't even th- like. I like Shit's Creek, but I don't think it's as popular as people who watch it might think that it actually is. You're like, right. It's probably like that Canadian perception of like, oh, they know something we've made. That means it's popular more than just yeah, they've they've recognized it. Yeah, I think that um, it, I think that it is popular, and it gets it's it gets like a lot of awards recognition. But it's a lot like you know how everyone said for years like it's a lot like The Wire in a sense, like when The Wire yeah. was actually on TV and people were like, everyone should watch The Wire. It's really good. But no one watched The Wire when it was on. Everyone just watched it afterwards. That like, you yeah, can say, no, sure. and then when you talked about The Wire for a very long time, that no one knew what the hell you were talking about. And then enough people started talking about it that everyone finally went back and watched like, oh, I get it now. And Chits Creek is not close to that. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not suggesting it's The Wire in any way. I'm just trying to think of ways that maybe That's these you were become more seen. That's what you were suggesting, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yep, that's... I, no, okay. I'll, I'll stand I'll stand by that take. It's a red-hot take. Uh, Best in Show made $18 million in the box office when it came out. So, in 2000. And yeah. Are you there on streaming services? I don't... See, I don't think so. I think that really yeah. hurts 
the viability of it too. Yeah. Look, I, it's, it's tough. It's, I, I think anyone, though, if, if, if we've made the case that we don't have to look at these things from, you know, a popularity standpoint or a cultural impact standpoint to really figure out if it's just truly what is funny, I have no problem putting best in show as a four seed. But do best in show and a mighty win crack the top half of the bracket or is mighty win like a 10 seed? No, it's, it's probably a seven, seven seed. I mean, people have heard wishing or picking, haven't they? If they haven't seen the movie. No. I know, I'm being sarcastic. Well, I, I, fewer people have seen a mighty win than best in show. You think so? I mean, yes, I, 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 know, I know so. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's hard to believe. Wait, what do you mean that's hard to believe? I, I figure if you've seen one, you definitely would have seen the other. Like once you were in stitches with uh, Best in Show, you're like, what else have they made? And you would watch it too. Is there a movie that we have left out so far that definitely can should be considered in the top 32? Like an obvious. I'm not talking about black comedies because I think we'll save the black comedies for the second part of this decade bracket. But like any just overt, like does Legally Blonde get in? Eh. To a 64, I think it would have to. Um, any of the scary movies, do they crack the top 32? It would only be scary movie one, and I don't think it necessarily has to. I, I think the one, the one that I would maybe look at that we haven't touched on yet, uh, Zombieland, I really enjoyed. I don't think that's um, like funny, funny. But even that, yeah, I don't have to necessarily put that in my top 32. I'm trying to see. Like, there's movies, there's movies like Accepted, Waiting. I feel like yeah. they're, they're on like the next tier down. I think those were always going to be like play in movies, though. If we were, if we were doing a 32. Hit. Like Bad, San Bad Santa's obscure enough not to have it as a legit th top 32. That's in the black comedy discussion. I know, but like, okay, I feel like it might break through though out of, out of, with its popularity. But I, 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 I listen, if I was doing the top 32, I would put Bad Santa into it, but there's a, there's a <laughs> list of like 20 movies as a part of that, that discussion that goes into it. Like, uh, I'll maybe I'll do this for, as a tease for the next show, but I have Tenenbaums, Grand Budapest Hotel, In Bruges, Bad, Bad Santa, Idiocracy, I Heart Huckabees, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Young Adult, Zombieland, The Informant. And then all the Coen's movies, basically. Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Burn After Reading, Intolerable Cruelty, Lady Killers, and, and then Adaptation. Uh, I think I'll fall into a different bucket. And then you have, like, action comedies as well. Like, Rush Hour 2 came out in this decade. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ocean's Eleven yeah. came out in this decade, which is pretty fucking hilarious. That, that was one I was going to bring up. I mean, that, in terms of staying power, it's a funny movie. Um, but I, I'm not sure if you asked me to classify that movie, I would first come up with comedy as opposed to just it's a heist movie. Um, yeah, like Snatch is a far, far funnier and better heist movie than Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, Snatch is actually on that. I, it's one I forgot to say is actually on that uh, short list. Grand too. Budapest Hotel doesn't qualify. Why? Because it was from 2014. Is it really? Yes, it only came out that, not that long ago. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. I, I'm thinking of Life Aquatic. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. That's it infinitely better movie yeah but i mean that's that's one that's funny but not like sure. fu funny funny like the funniest part of life aquatic is when he just continues to say i will call you kingsley <laughs> 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 uh here's one what women want a wildly oh. out of date movie but kind of hilarious is that not a 90s movie? It shocks me that's not a 90s movie. It, it has all the feels of a 90s movie, Gary, but I believe it came out in oh, 2000. Man. I'll say this, um, and I don't want to be I don't I don't want to be rude about this, but I think any movie that where there's such a serious through line about a woman, you know, considering suicide, um, probably not going to make like a funniest movie list. I mean, what if the joke is about that, like in Royal Tenenbaums, like? That's, that's that's true actually or best in show yeah or best in show yeah, yeah. no that's true I, I you know what i think those two movies handle it a little bit better well the one from royal ten above is what, just like you know I, I i it's after he tried to kill himself he woke up and wrote the suicide notes can i read the note no is it dark <laughs> of course it's dark it's a suicide note <laughs> And what's the one from Best in Show? It's it's Jane Lynch. Jane Lynch describes how her mother was the anchor of the family, and they, everyone drew on her for emotional support until she took her own life in 1982. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll get to those 
uh, I think on the next show, and then try to figure out the rest of the 64. Because I think we're, we're pretty zoned into at least the top 30, top 35 here and where they should fall. Then we'll try to fill out the rest of the bracket. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. Sounds good to me. All right, good. Gary and Thorne, you can follow him on Twitter at Gary and Thorne. Thank you for being on, sir. No problem. All right. Uh, I would also like to thank who you can follow on Twitter at Tim Andercust. Tim Andercust. That Tim Anderson 87. That is not my Twitter handle. Um, and listen, I know a lot of people who are, uh, you know, you're around. Hit me up with a DM if you got some hot takes on this stuff. There's a particular movie that you want to talk about when we start talking about the matchups. Listen, I got a ton of time. We can film some shows. We'll be good to go. We'll be back with part two of this in the future. But that is for future people to find out. I'm Pat Mayo. You can follow me at the PME on Twitter, where all these polls will be run. Hit the description of this video or podcast, and you can find... I'll continue to update them, so you can find part two. But if you just subscribe to the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast, uh, you can find everything up there, or the DraftKings YouTube page, where you're going to find everything as well. Thank you all for watching. Get in the giveaways with the smashing of the like button and whatnot. And I'll see you next time. Experience! Experience!